Hello everybody, it's Tasman, welcome back to my classics shelf collection tours. Today I'm going to be showing you my Penguin Little Black classics. As you can tell, I really like Penguin. They make really nice <laughs> additions. What's brilliant about these is that a lot of them are either snippets of longer things, or their collections of really, really short essays or short stories. Or some of them are just complete but very, very short plays or books or poetry collections. So if there's a poet or an author or playwright that you want to get into, but you don't know if you like their style, you can pick up one of these for super duper cheap. Originally, they were all 80p because they released 80 of these Penguin Little Black Classics for the 80th anniversary of Penguin. Then it was bumped up to one pound and then they released a whole new bunch so that there are like nearly 200 of them now I think and some of them like one I'm going to show you in a bit is thicker than the others and that one's two pounds. I will read you the tiny tiny two or three line description on the back so they will have a number and I'll, I'll do them in, in number order. The first one I have is number eight which is A Modest Proposal by Jonathan Swift. Swift's ferocious landmark 18th century political satire on how to solve famine in Ireland. Number nine is by Anonymous, three Tang Dynasty poets. Pastoral, lyrical verse evoking the rural landscapes and people of 8th century China. Next, I have a book by Marco Polo, well I think this is a snippet of it. Travels in the Land of Serpents and Pearls, this is book number 16. An intrepid Venetian traveller's observations of a 13th century India filled with lavish jewels, chaste princes, superstitions and naked armies. Book 17 is Caligula by Suetonius, this is a non-fiction account of Caligula and is the section in a book by Suetonius about all of the Roman emperors, or at least all of them leading up to when Suetonius was around, but so this is obviously the section just about Caligula. The original biography of the murderous, crazed and incestuous Roman emperor Caligula, who pronounced himself a god by this guy. Fucking amazing. Well, no, crazy, absolutely insane, but really fascinating, oh my god. Next, I have Jason and Medea by Apollonius of Rhodes, a historic tale of love, anguish, and the golden fleece from the ancient Greek epic Argonautica. This is number 23, and it is The Tinderbox by Hans Christian Andersen. This has six fairy tales in. The Tinderbox, Little Claws, Big Claws, The Princess and the Pea, The Steadfast Tin Soldier, The Nightingale, and The Red Shoes. Anderson's bittersweet fairy tales propelled their troubled author to international fame and revolutionised children's writing. Next, I have The Wife of Bath by Geoffrey Chaucer. One of the most famous Canterbury tales casts a satirical eye over sex and marriage in the medieval age. Oh, this one is number 33 and it is The Beautiful Cassandra by Jane Austen. Austen's riotous early stories are drunks, poisoners and prison breaks, written for her family's entertainment when she was only a teenager. This is number 53, which is Goblin Market by Christina Rossetti. Now this one is a poetry collection. It has the Goblin Market and then some of her other poems in the back. And my friend got it for me for my birthday and she put all of these posters in, which is really sweet. The pioneering 19th century poet's best known and most starkly imaginative verses on love, death and loss. Something that I just noticed, completely forgot about this, but on the front page of all of them is a quote, so this is the one from the Jane Austen. She has many rare and charming qualities, but sobriety is not one of them. Number 54 is Sinbad the Sailor by Anonymous. Adventures of shipwreck, colossal beasts and fantastical islands from 1001 Nights. This is Antigone by Sophocles, and it is book 55 in this collection. The Tragedy of Oedipus's Daughter, a wise, fearless heroine who shuns society's laws, from the master Greek dramatist. How Much Land Does a Man Need by Leo Tolstoy, and it is number 57. A parable of a Russian peasant's bargain with the devil, considered by James Joyce to be the world's greatest story. Hmm, I didn't like it, but each to their own. <laughs> now this is book... 58. It's about Leonardo da Vinci by Giorgio Vasari. The first art historian explores genius and madness in Leonardo and other celebrated Renaissance artists. Number 59 is Lord Arthur Savile's Crime by Oscar Wilde. While supremely witty tale of dandies, anarchists and a murderous prophecy in London high society. Number 61 is The Dolphins, The Whales and The Gudgeon 
by Aesop. Aesop, Aesop, composed by a slave in Greek antiquity, some of the most ancient, sharp-witted and mysterious stories ever told. So, super old fairy tales. Book 67 is It Is Snowing Butterflies by Charles Darwin. Exotic creatures and unexplored terrains populate Darwin's account of the Beagle's momentous voyage. Number 68, Brothers Grimm's The Robber Bridegroom. Drawn from German folklore, dark fantastical fairy tales of wicked deeds, gruesome punishment and just rewards. This is a collection of lots of super short fairy tales. Number 69 is I Love and I Hate by Catalyst, by terms rapturous, erotic and despairing. This astonishingly modern verse tells of an ancient Roman poet's all-consuming infatuation of one woman. So, poetry. This is Circe and the Cyclops by Homer. It is number 70 in the collection and it is a snippet from the Odyssey. Ancient Greek myths from the Odyssey telling of battles with deadly beasts and a beautiful enchantress. That's, that's Circe. This I also studied at school. I love it so much. So number 73 is The Fall of Icarus by Ovid, enduring myths of vengeful gods and tragically flawed mortals from ancient Rome's great poet. Come Close by Sappho. She's an ancient Greek poet. A she, you heard me right, she. And she was, I believe, actually the first female poet. This is number 74 in the collection. Sensual, sun-soaked verse on love and the gods in ancient Greece from the poet named The Tenth Muse by Plato. Number 79 is Speaking of Siva by Anonymous. Four medieval Hindu saints approach sex and death through riddle and enigma in this mystical devotional poetry. Two more. These are the fat ones, so these two are the two pound ones. And this is The Frogs by Aristophanes. This riotous play from ancient Greece's greatest comic dramatist blends fancy dress, earthy slapstick and political debate. This is Daphnis and Chloe by Longus. Oh, the last one was number 101, and this one is 115. Two young lovers battle pirates, rivals, and their own confused feelings in this tender pastoral romance from ancient Greece. This is one of the five ancient Greek romances written in prose, not a play. So this is like a short novel kind of thing. So here they are, my small, small little children. Oh, um, I don't know if you could tell, but they're really small. They can literally like fit in your handbag when you go to like a nightclub or something, if you're like me. So yeah, so this is all of them. Thank you very much for watching. Um, social media down below. And I'll see you soon. Bye.